Hello church. Welcome to the midweek update with your pastor. I hope that you're doing well and I'm grateful to have this opportunity to, to visit with you just for a few minutes this Wednesday evening. First of all, I just want to, to say just a word of, um, of thanks to you. I want to thank you for all that you're continuing to do. As, as I'm watching you, I'm seeing you continue to minister to one another in the midst of this pandemic. Uh, I'm, I'm hearing reports of how you're caring for one another and uh, you know meeting with each other in various formats and just staying connected to each other. And I just want to encourage you to continue to do that very thing. I also want to thank you for your faithfulness as a church family. You've continued to be supportive financially of the ministries of our church. You continue to be obedient to the Lord in your generosity. And just want to say a word of thanks to you as your pastor. I want to thank you for your encouragement. <clears throat> this past Sunday, I preached on encouragement. And I want you to know you're a very encouraging congregation. You are to me. I've received notes and calls and texts, emails, and it's just been um, uh, a really sweet time for me as your pastor, even though we have been um, separated from one another physically for the most part, uh, I've still felt very connected to you. And I'm grateful that you still feel connected to me. And I love you. And I want to thank you for your encouragement. I also want to give you just a quick word today before we get to our, our Bible study about a couple of things. One of them is, a number of you have asked me, so, so what's happening with our facilities since uh, we've been in this pandemic. Well, let me just give you a really quick update. Our student building is almost finished. Uh, for the most part, it really is finished. We're really on a punch list right now, but it has been completely renovated and it is beautiful on the inside. I'm very proud of it. And in fact, yesterday we had our first in-person staff meeting slash online virtual staff meeting. So it was a hybrid if you will, we had some of our staff here and we had some joining us um, uh, through Microsoft Teams. When the uh, staff meeting was over, a number of us went over and toured the student building. And it was just very encouraging to, to, to see our staff who hadn't seen it yet, see it for the first time, really excited about it. The third floor of this main building, um, I know it has been an ongoing saga, but we actually had a meeting this very week, in fact, yesterday, with some insurance reps uh, from our insurance company and we've, we're getting much better news and hopefully we'll be able to begin the repairs of that third floor soon. We had an unfortunate thing happen in the Wade building over the Memorial Day weekend. One of our water lines ruptured that feeds the coffee machine on the fifth floor and before we were able to get to it, it, it caused some damage on the fifth floor, the fourth floor, the third floor and the second floor of the Wade building. Good news is uh, we hired a company to come and help mitigate the damage. They did an outstanding job. We've been in contact with our insurance company. It's a new insurance provider now about it. And we feel really good about our ability to, to get the Wade building restored and repaired and, and, and ready to be back online in its fullest measure. And so thank you for praying for us about that. And then uh, the first floor of this main building is a part of our Blessing the Generations campaign. And want you to know that we have been working as well on those plans and trying to decide exactly what's the best way to proceed. And so we've got some of our leaders working alongside us, trying to help make some of those decisions as we move forward in the Blessing the Generations campaign. Thank you for your continued support because every, every dollar that we continue to give to the Blessing the Generations campaign will be a dollar we won't ever have to borrow again. And so um, it's, it's important that we keep in, um, giving to it and supporting it because we're going to eventually be able to use what the funds that we have and complete this first floor project. That's certainly uh, our plan. So thank you for your generosity there. And then on a, a whole other subject, uh, I do want to let you know that I have been working closely with pastors here in our city as we're trying to respond uh, to the pandemic itself, first of all, but also as we have come together as pastors to try to respond to racial prejudice uh, in our community. And I want you to know that I'm very grateful uh, for those relationships and just humbled by the relationships that I have with these local pastoral leaders here in this community. I would also tell you that I'm a part of another network of pastors, uh, a group of Texas Baptist pastors across our state. 
we have been meeting as well and we are formulating a, a response and a plan for us as churches to engage in as we want to continue to combat racial prejudice and we're doing that peacefully and we're doing it thoughtfully and prophetically I hope and certainly passionately and so I continue to ask your prayers for us as leaders as we try to respond in appropriate ways in a Christ-like manner and uh, also for our leaders across our state in particular that we'll be able to uh, encourage them and bless them pray for protection for uh, our first responders as they engage in all kinds of challenging situations and just pray for God's hand to be at work in all of that but I, I will tell you this I've been really humbled by the uh, relationships that we have forged and by the progress that I believe we've made and I'm very encouraged by what I see happening in front of us as pastors in this state and in this local community so thank you for praying for us and for continuing to pray for our leaders. Now with all that said, what I'd like to do today is look at a text with you. Our, our theme for this week, our topic if you will, is encouragement. You know I shared a message with you last Sunday on encouragement and I just want you to look at a text with me today. It's Hebrews 10 and I want to begin in verse 23 where the writer of Hebrews says, let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess. For he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. Well, I shared this text with you Sunday morning as we began our time in worship. And it is a, it's a beautiful statement to me about encouragement. And I want to just offer you three thoughts, if I can, about encouragement from this text. The first one is this, we all need it. And so none of us are exempt from discouragement. There are going to be times when every one of us face circumstances that are particularly challenging, unsettling. There are times when we feel the pressures of uncertainty. I know a number of you are feeling that right now as we're facing this pandemic as I'm listening to, to church members, as I'm just watching what's happening on the landscape of our society right now, I know it's unsettling. We've had some folks who've been furloughed from their jobs. We've had some who've been laid off from their jobs. And so there's, there's some, a good degree of economic uncertainty right now and financial instability. We also know that, um, that the, the isolation that many of us have, have experienced has, has also come with some ramifications on multiple levels and so we are engaged in ministry every week as a church with people who are facing some of those challenges as well. And so here's the thing, we all need encouragement and, uh, and so it's, it, it puts us in that category of a common need. And the writer of the, uh, to the uh, church that uh, we believe was in Rome primarily comprised of Hebrew Christians, he knew that. He knew that people get discouraged and so none of us are exempt, we all need encouragement. Here's the second thing I would point out though about this text. We can all be encouragers. That's the good news. We can all be encouragers. You don't have to have any special training. You know, you don't have to go through some class. You don't have to attend a seminar to learn how to encourage other people. Anybody can encourage. I can remember when I was playing basketball in high school, our high school coach, um, uh, Coach Tucker, who's a great guy, I loved Coach Tucker. We had a guy from our uh, team who was older than me and graduated from our high school and went on a scholarship to the University of Alabama to play basketball. Uh, now, all of y'all know I'm an Auburn fan, and so, however, we were very proud of this guy from our former team uh, who played ball at Alabama. And so, anyway, he was home one, uh, over the holidays one time, and he told us that at the University of Alabama that uh, when they had gotten to, they were given some um, awards to the, uh, to the team as they were in the middle of the break just to encourage one another. And one of the players for Alabama received two awards. He was voted by the coaches best defensive player and the player who hustled the most. So he won the hustle award. And when they asked that, that player, which one are you most proud of? That the coaches voted you to be the best defensive player or to be the player who hustled the most? And you know what this guy said? He said, well, I'm, I'm proud of being voted the best defensive player, of course anybody can hustle. Well, that's a pretty good word. Anybody can encourage. You don't have to be trained in it. It's, it's just something we all can do. And so what I would tell you is a part of our responsibility 
is to encourage others. We, we need to, to all have a ministry of encouragement because it's important. Remember, we all need it. We all need encouragement. So you don't have to worry about folks whether or not they need encouraging. Of course they do. And so we all can join in the ministry of encouragement. But here's a third truth from this text that I, that I especially love. And that is, we're not told how to do it. I actually love that. We are told to do it. We're just not told how to do it. So here's what the writer says. He said, let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. And then he says, now we're not going to give up meeting together. Now you, you might find that a little bit ironic right now with us in this pandemic, but here's the good news. We haven't given up on meeting together. As I said Sunday morning, you're watching me right now. We've got Zoom Bible studies that are happening right now. Uh, we've got some small in-person gatherings that are happening across the life of our church right now. So we haven't given up on the assembling of ourselves together. We're just having to do it mostly virtually. But the point is we realize how important it is. But here's what I love about this. He tells us to encourage one another, but he doesn't tell us how to do it. He says, let's consider how we might spur one another on. So there's the open door for you. You've got a chance to be creative to try to figure out how to encourage other people. You might start by thinking about what encourages you. What are the kinds of things that encourage you as a person? Is it when somebody writes you a note? Is it when somebody um, just considers you? Maybe when they call you or, or right now, I realize it's a little challenging, but just a drive-by perhaps to see you or maybe a special gift. Um, you, you may think about what encourages me and that will give you some ideas on how you might encourage other people. But everybody's not encouraged by the same thing, you know, but there are some general parameters that are true. Just just acknowledgement is is an encouragement, in my opinion. And so however you choose to do that, it, it'll go a long way in lifting somebody else's spirit. So I don't know if if it, it particularly in this week, but not just this week, but just in our normal course of living as believers. Is it there are folks that maybe you need to call or send a note to or you know, drop a card to, or uh, maybe just drive by and check on them, or maybe take a gift to them. You know, that's been happening to us all along during this pandemic. We've had church members who've just encouraged us. Cindy and I came in from a walk one day and there was a nothing but cake sitting on the, the roof of my car out in our driveway with a note from some church members just encouraging us. Well, that was just a, it was just a great word. It was just a sweet word to us. We had, we had a drive-by on Father's Day. We had a church family drop by and, and uh, bring us a, a, a little gift and encourage us and give us a card. I mean, those kinds of things go a long way just to, to let people know you're thinking about them, that you care about them. So you've got it within your wherewithal to figure out how to do it. Sometimes it, it takes a long time to do it. Sometimes you got to be really thoughtful. Sometimes you got to plan. You know, we had, a, we had a family in our church, a girl that we love, and, and uh, her fiancé, um, he, he wanted to ask, uh, he wasn't her fiancé yet, he wanted to ask for her hand in marriage. And, uh, and he and I talked about it. Well, one of the challenges was that uh, her parents were both deaf. And so let me tell you what this young man did. He took the time to learn sign language, and so he took it upon himself to make the venture to visit with her parents, and he was able to sign to, to both of them and request permission to marry their daughter. Now, how encouraging do you think that was to that young lady and her parents? So sometimes encouragement requires a little bit of energy, a little bit of time, and a little bit of thought. Sometimes you can do it very quickly and very easily. Sometimes it's going to require something a little bit more out of you. But here's the good news. We all, we all need to do it. And so what are some ways you can practically encourage the people in your life right now? What are some plans that you can make to be a messenger of encouragement? Remember, everybody needs it. Well, so with that said, be encouraged. I want you to know I love you, and I'm honored to be your pastor during these days. And uh, as always, we are so happy to hear from you. Uh, if there are ways that we can help you, encourage you, bless you, we sure want to do that. We have. Uh, ministers on call every day. You can call the church and we'll do our best to respond to you if we can. Uh, if you feel more comfortable writing us a note, you can send us an email and we're happy to hear from you. We'll do our best to respond to you. But let me just say, let's continue to stay connected to each other and let's consider how we might encourage one another toward good deeds and love during these days. God bless you and I hope to see you soon.